they're, they were taking, their, their guys are probably the people installing their equipment, so that's, that's not just our regular maintenance guys, I guess, because it's going to be for getting ready for the uh, wires and everything for these consoles. You know, there's a lot of wiring and stuff going on. Other than that, um, I didn't just see much. I never gave a committee report. I don't know what's expected. So just you can just give a brief synopsis. So it's just it looks like everything's on track for the equipment install and. Yeah, has the tractor been fixed? Not the monoclerk. No. Not the monoclerk. No, just an 
saying the word be instead of said nothing.
very long, very long stuff from now on to the ball. Uh, I guess a big bar. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Have you got any time on that? Oh, we got the call in today. They just Is well, it uh, typical to uh, service that you use the service plan most all of the stuff? Yeah, I'm not yeah. Yeah. I know. I don't know if this is good or bad. I, I, don't, I don't know. 
this is. I'm not saying that it's a bad bit, I just don't know. Compare, I don't have anything to compare it against, I guess, is what. It would probably be almost my only thing. Is yeah, I, I can see your point. Um, but I can see yours too. <coughs> <coughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
not mean marital property. Uh, it's household property. Yeah, so Correct. Yeah, we don't own the property, so they're going to have to do it. They need to do something before the yeah. bank permission. I had a complaint about it. There's a downed tree yes. west, west of uh, Dan Hawks, where Hawks Fishing Pond is, west of Beckingham there, on the big road. <laughs> Uh, right there, well, across the road from uh, Mark Jenner's sister's place. Okay. And people have been hitting their mirrors on this uh, okay. tree, and I was going to take my tractor over there, and I was afraid the root ball was going to take off the fence. So okay. it probably just changed all in 10 minutes would be, yeah. I'll ask Mark about here on the okay. Mark Jenner. Yeah. Uh, I hadn't seen anybody, and I thought I better. You guys, are, you guys are, are you guys busy with, like, Pothole repair is going to uh, be done. I'll let the guys go to Kansas City tomorrow and get a little bit of a pothole patch. Um, yeah. We've been working on some culverts sure. and rocking the roads and grading, but uh, we'll probably start uh, patching pothole right Thursday. Okay. And also, um, just bring it up on speed, we had a, a, a meeting with KDOT on the Dolby Bridge, the pre construction meeting, mm -hmm. and they're going to start construction on that March the 30th. So they'll get going on that. Finally. Yeah. yeah. That's about uh, three years now. It's been a long time. Would you call it Dolby Bridge? Yeah, Dolby Bridge. Sour River Road. Oh, South. Sour River Road. When are they going to start it? March 30th. So that's all I have. Yeah. Any other questions? Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank, thank you, man. Thank you. That's a one feel. There's one communications board in that last Wednesday that has been bid for the mm -hmm. to dispatch um, stuff. The equipment for all the tables, five and ten minutes, and the whole setup for the dispatch, fifty-seven thousand. We just want to pay the other nine one one funds. Okay, this is what. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So I showed you the packet of the. Yeah. Well, good. And this bit also had the extra loggers and okay. that were that's what you're saying. Mm -hmm. And has all the electrical and everything has to be grounded this batch because even you walking up and touching one of the computers or radios can try a radio, so it includes all the grounding for the whole set of also. Yeah, they didn't need to. Okay. So I think you can go to the plan there and the next way. Mm -hmm. I told them after I got there. And um, this was you, you, uh, it was a bit out. Bit out about two different. Okay, okay. Just ask me. Yeah. Okay. Okay.
No, there should be there should one in sort of one somewhere.
Well, uh, can you leave, <laughs> if you want to leave your contact information? Sorry about that. Oh, please. Yeah, I didn't realize it was going to be important that long. And we will have uh, Pat contact you as, as soon as he gets done with that. He can tell you a little bit. Okay. All right. Okay. No, I appreciate you coming out. No, no, thank, thank you. Thanks, guys. Good day. You're early, so if you want to go ahead. Okay. Then I think it's that guy. Okay. Mm -hmm. She's good to you. Yeah, he's had a little cool. That's all right. I knew somebody came in, I just didn't. Yeah. He knows his stuff. Well, how have you guys been doing? Okay. Are you talking? Or? Absolutely. Okay. <laughs> well, I think we did it. I don't remember when. I'm Shelly Nelson with Community Corrections. I, like, I think you were up here the day that um, just getting started. Yeah. Yeah, but I'm with Community Corrections. Okay, I think I met you in the jail because they took a tour through the... the uh we were over here. We were in over there. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, you, I remember the face. I just couldn't remember talking to you. So. Well, <coughs> for FY15, because we're a fiscal year, not calendar year. Yeah, i so we get our money from the state, not from the county. We do grants to get our money. Well, I should say the majority of our money. Um, and FY15, which is what I'm currently in, we had $163,501 from DOC. And from JJA, we had $138,642. We just got our information. Well, we didn't just get our information, but the information we got for FY16, and this is just proposed, this isn't for sure yet. But um, on the DOC side, $159,449, and on the juvenile side, $143,404. So we got a little extra money on the juvenile side, but a little bit of a decrease on the DOC side. Um, our ADP, which is our average daily population, in December on the adult side, we had 71. And at the end of February, we had 78. On the juvenile side, we have 23 kids. Now those can be in the community, in a placement, in a personal facility. Um, um, our outcomes so far for FY15, we already had our first and second quarter. What we want to do is we want to reach a 44% success rate. And I got that number from our FY13 numbers, which is 41%. The state wants us to achieve 3% increase every year, or 75%. That's the ultimate goal. Um, but at this point right now, I'm shooting for 44. Our first quarter, I was 45%. Second quarter, was 60%, which gives us a 50% success rate right now for uh, FY15. And then, of course, in FY14, I'm sorry, I don't mean to overwhelm you because no. you're not familiar with any of them. Um, in FY14, we had an 82% success rate, which is amazing. Mm -hmm. But, you know, to go to that type of success rate, you know, there's always, that's why I got to base my grant off of this year, which is what I'm writing. Mm -hmm. So, I'm a little, a little worried because, you know, it's, it's a cycle. No matter what tools we have, it's still a cycle. It depends on the people and the community. And so, anyway. But right now, we're, we're meeting our goal for FY15. So, okay, that's, that's all the notes I wrote down. I expect that anything for me to ask me, so I just know what I'm going to So, like, that expectation of like 3% above that annual, or is it they break it out by quarter? Well, it's annual. Annual. I have to do a report quarterly, yeah. but overall, we want the annual number. CIC software system, any more? I mean, have you guys? We haven't had any issues with it Good. so far. Good. Or anyone. So. Good. Yeah. Uh, we've been somewhat informal with you know with this process, but we just thought it'd be because not everybody comes up to us every month, but just having like a, a monthly update from. Are we still? Is it still monthly? Or yeah, I think initially we're going to try to do it okay. do it monthly, and okay. then as needed, you know, possibly do it quarterly. Okay, and then I'll be coming up sometime in April after I get my grant sure. done to get oh, yeah. approval and signatures. So. Okay. Anything you need from us or? Not at this point. Okay. So. Yeah. We haven't heard anything from Loudborn since we met in January, so we're not sure. Okay. When the next meeting or if anything, you know, we're not sure. I'm sure they're right. We have several things we were talking with them about, so, mm -hmm. um, but we haven't heard anything back from them. Meeting next or anything. Okay. Okay. Well, yeah, yeah. Like I said, there hasn't been any. I think we tried getting hold of them on a couple of other things. Extension.
district and there's something else, but we haven't heard. Mm -hmm. All we know is that they're wanting to do another meeting at some point, but we don't know.
going to be a significant um, loss in tipping fee revenue that we've already established for this year, and we're trying to make we're trying to hold that budget line. So, uh, but if he brought it in each individual house, and he was under the thousand pounds, there wouldn't be a charge. His problem is, is that he's bringing in. Mm -hmm. mixed multiple, well, which is hard to... Yeah, I don't know if it's just if it is one resident or if it is two residences that, you know... But when you bring in 1,400 pounds in a month... Yeah. Was he aware of this, though? I mean, I mean it's... I, we slightly changed well, the system. Well, yeah. yeah. Other than this, this is his first... Well, I don't know if he with them. Um, sometime last year, he was somebody that was inquiring because um, he received the bill or a load of 1,200 pounds, and this was 2014 charges where okay. you exceeded 1,000 pounds, you paid for the entire load. Mm -hmm. This is the yeah. first year where we're trying to, trying to, being the alpha word, trying to keep track of each individual resident and giving that 1,000 pound allowance for accounts, not for residences, only the, the businesses that qualify as, you know, and I know that was an issue with the the solid waste committee is we, we went around and around and around about what should qualify, but this is what we have passed for this year, and he was insistent that he discuss. Yeah, so I don't want to drag out, you know, I don't, don't want to create World War III. I mean, you know, if he was, if he, do, you, do you believe that he wasn't necessarily aware of how? I told him that I really don't know any specifics about his particular case and that yeah. all that I know is what he brings in that he gets the thousand pound limit and we've been and we but he's aware of that now he's aware of that now the thousand pounds I believe so I don't know. because he's received two invoices from us this year and they have the thousand pounds credit on it so that what so those, two, over, those, those two Equate to eight dollars and forty cents, or that's just just month. last year's, or just last month's February's invoice. But he said he brought it to this year. Um, I believe he has. Uh, he hasn't been charged since January first of twenty fourteen, somewhere around ninety five dollars, because he brings in hundreds, not just individual, you know, hundred pounds here, hundred pounds there. There's significant weight, so. It's safe to assume he brought in something for January. I don't know if he was under the thousand pounds and didn't receive a bill or didn't. But I'm assuming since it's been brought up now that he did receive something in February, or he he did receive something in February, and he's just calling in. Um, he could conceivably bring in smaller loads and put different addresses down that are his and get under that. Well, see, the only people that are allowed to do that. When somebody brings in a load, all we do is we ask for their name and we get a vehicle description. And we get their full weight and full weight. Mm -hmm. So we have individuals that use multiple vehicles bringing in tonnages that aren't their residences, that they're just hauling for people. They'll still get attributed to that one person because they are bringing it in. Whether okay. it's so these would all be attributed to Gary Hanging no matter if... Mm -hmm. Okay. That's where... I'm Right, mm -hmm. and see that that you know if we did allow that, uh, it's a nightmare for us to try and keep track of it. Right, because you can rattle off any residents. So you have sixteen thousand residential addresses, or my like to that extent. My only concern is is isolating it like by entity structure. That's that's because well, like, there's multiple different business. I mean, list, can you list the specific ones you said? Have to, when you say specifically it has to be a corporation, you can do multiple different ways with entities well, owning multiple properties. I guess that would be my only concern. Is well, we only limited it because the argument was since 2014 was that um, if you are a landlord that is incorporated, I mean, you, this is a business, this isn't one or two houses that you own, that you somehow. Um, warrants some kind of exemption from a typical business because the primary mode of your business is providing a residence and conceivably every residence that you, the property that you own or maintain, has already paid into the system, that being the argument. So that 
each residence that they own or maintain should be given that same thousand pounds. Mm -hmm. We limit it to those businesses because of that particular, I mean, it's a unique set, it's kind of a gray area between what's an individual resident in the county and what's a business. So an individual resident gets that thousand pounds for them as an account. And, you know, I don't, really we don't distinguish between uh, a residential and a commercial, it's just by account. Because that simplifies things, however it's brought in. So it applies the same way to businesses as it does residents. So what's at issue here is whether an individual who um, does own multiple residences believes that that person should be applicable to say. And under the resolution, it clearly, I mean, he would not qualify. Did he so indicate if he would give you a list of his properties or? Well, the, he can, but again, it would be immaterial because he's not incorporated. It, if we did that for him, then, I mean, without... With, without starting over. Without right? essentially starting over and experiencing in this year a significant rev revenue loss because if we extended that courtesy or exemption to one person, I would have a due diligence to extend it to everyone so that we wouldn't have an instance where we were viewed as discriminating on someone because they get an exemption but this person didn't. I would have to extend it to everyone. And it's easier to just say, no, these, this is specifically what is written. It has been discussed extensively throughout last year and the beginning of this year. This is what we're going with. And um, considering it's a charge of $8.40, I would be inclined to just say, you know, it's not a, it's not a couple hundred dollars that would be dangerous, I guess you would call it. You know, if it was a significant amount, then maybe we would have to take some consideration into it. But I would think that we would stay with this policy at least for this for the year. This just started the first of January, correct? Mm -hmm. And see where this is going. If we would have somebody in this situation that would have huge bills by the end of the year, mm -hmm. which could conceivably, but if, like you say, if it's only $8 now. With that thousand pound limit, we are allowed up to $210 a year of service that's paid for with sales tax. Right. And that's, I mean, that's one, or um, that's 12,000 pounds. If you exceed 12,000 pounds a year. Now, I did, wasn't very aware there's a, you know, a guy named Dennis Thummel, and he was had a complaint there that he brought in a total of 260 pounds and was charged for four dollars and fifty five cents for it. If and whenever somebody comes across the scale, they get a ticket, and the ticket has the rate charge. At the end of the billing cycle, when we send out the invoice, that's when it applies the thousand pounds. So if you are under the thousand pounds, you will not get an invoice from us because we just accounting wise don't even bother. So if you bring in 250 pounds, you're going to get a ticket that will say whatever charge on it. If that's all you bring in in the 30 day period, then so you're not charged. You're, you're not charged in a bill. Okay. We can't. We've tried to work with WSL to have some some item, line item on the ticket that says, you know, this is how much of your allowance you've used. Okay. It's I. So he probably didn't realize that. Well, we've, yeah. we, we've tried to communicate. The other issue with this particular individual and a number of other individuals is that they are 90 days plus since we've seen any activity on their account. I've talked it over with Pat and um, and we have we are in the process of sending a letter notifying them that until they we see some activity on that account, you're not allowed to dump there. Because we have a, a couple of businesses that have hundreds of dollars that we haven't seen any payment from. We it's not good business practice to continue to allow somebody to use the service without I mean, whether it's paid in full or in part, we do need to see some activity. I mean, you do need to make an effort to pay because we can't keep running these um, negative balances and just not enforcing it. So Yeah, I mean I didn't I didn't take a complaint but for the due to mattresses and just the under 
six to scale tickets. Really? Yeah. Dang. I didn't even know, read it. That should sign. Yeah. Mm, okay. Yeah, so this would have been... He's correct, I know that. So for earlier this week. That, yeah. Yeah. Is that, doesn't he get this commercial hauler? Or I, I don't know. No, he gets a thousand pounds just like okay. everyone else. Um, and I, we would have bought, I mean, in this case, when you're talking about, I mean, that's where it's hard to say, like last year, several of us didn't realize that anything over a thousand was getting the full mm -hmm. charge. I'm just trying to make sure, what, when is our next uh, solid waste? June. Um, uh, June is the scheduled one, and then we're still waiting for oh, our contractual for for budget. For yeah. budget. Well, yeah, not only for the budget, but also to revisit, because that's the six month mark of the new resolution. So they want to see how uh, how it's going to apply. Is it you know, financially solvent, or are we going to just continue to run a deficit that we need to make up with sales tax? So that's all budgetary stuff. But as soon as Deffenball lets us know anything about the contract, then we're going to have to issue an RFP, which means I mean I have it already written up. So as soon as we get notice on the very next commission meeting, uh, I'll make sure it be in communication before then. That we can approve an RFP to be sent out to the other business so we can get a new contract as soon as we receive bids, put it before the Salt Waste Committee, put it before the Commission, make sure the next contract is you know it's viewed by everybody. So that's going to be an ad hoc. I mean, whenever we know that's what will be next, I don't have any indication as if I can get a week's notice, two weeks' notice. Whenever I get notice, that's when that email goes out. Now, our interlocal agreements we was having for the solid waste, and that was also the uh, direct communications funded both, didn't it? Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. our, when I had my joint communications meeting last mm -hmm. week there, they were indicated, well, basically that these interlocal agreements are kind of going by the wayside, or they're, they're useless. They thought that they weren't, weren't even pursuing them anymore that he said it don't matter if we sign up for them or not, the cities can still just walk away from them if they so choose. And also what was the rate that we were asking Addison and or uh Muscoda Effingham to pay on, on those? It was originally forty one percent. Um and that was like a year Yeah, that was the original. Then it was adjusted I was thinking that Mike told me 55%. See, I remember him saying something about that amount, too. But well, I think that's what the city of Atchison is paying if you include the ticket fee. And of course, they're the only one that pays the ticket fee. So, okay, well, I'm. You know, I was just kind of wondering where this is all standing. I think that's something, wasn't Mike kind of handling, doing a lot of that with Effingham and Muscoda and. Yes. Uh, Effingham, I guess, is not signed, and of course now we're into March of 2015, now we're getting yeah. into close to like another... Well, now's really the time we should be pursuing the next year. Has Effingham signed yet, or no? They're waiting on... Them. Did, was Atchison supposed to sign Atchison signed, they, they adopted theirs first. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, well, uh, I heard that Effingham was waiting on Atchison. And that's the reason that they hadn't signed. And they might see what Atchison did, I think. Atchison actually did theirs first. Yeah. 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 They adopted theirs uh, kind of on their own. We, we, didn't, we didn't even talk to them about this one. They just adopted one. They they did that because of the uh, the purchase of the ratings was coming up. And they were wanting to make sure that happened. So yeah, they were wanting to make sure. So they adopted it at the end of last year. So is this something that we need to or I need to follow up on? Get Effingham to sign because uh, I know Mike had indicated that. He thought, like in May or so, I ought to be starting to ask the outlying counties there to, I mean, to up it again. 
up their percentage since there's the uh, charge of transferring waste. So, you know, I'm, I'm in the middle here. I don't know what's what. And is that something that needs to be pursued, or is it? You know, the, the interlocal agreement, it's a general use sales tax. It's really, it's not everybody's whim on what they fund, unfortunately, the way it's drafted. So, I mean, that's our, that's our number one dilemma. Mm -hmm. um, it probably would help to start now communicating with the cities because we're right, right. all going to start our budget soon mm -hmm. and passing an interlocal agreement like we did the first time after everybody had already set their budget. That was what we kind of ran into because originally in 2014 uh, the city paid a tipping fee of $12.50 as opposed to the $35 a ton because they allocated this much and that's how much they were going to um, give us. So regardless of what we needed, mm -hmm. that's what was agreed on. Because it was in October, I believe, of 2013. So we came in already behind. So yeah, it's, and with the city, I don't know how joint communications does their uh, budget progress, but I know the city, if they have to ask the solid waste department, okay, what are, what are we looking at in terms of tipping fees and then that set agreed upon amount of sales tax that funds everything, uh, we can supply that, but it's not just the solid waste department, it's the solid waste and joint communication. So whatever I, I say, I am projecting in terms of tipping fee and then that additional 100, 125,000 that they just distribute uh, monthly through their sales tax, it needs to coordinate with joint communications. But if we agree on a number, and joint communications needed more than what I had budgeted for, you know, that it's, it's, a, it's a convoluted process for sure. But yeah, if, if we could start the all one now. And I know we had mentioned a 10 year, which I don't Yeah, know we had talked about trying to do something long term so it wouldn't, an annual, Agreement is you can see how challenging it is to, to get to get, yeah. to get that <laughs> right. And so far, through two months, we're seeing decreased solid waste tonnages again. Um, so at the six month mark, we should probably have. I mean, we will have a good idea of what my year in balance is going to look like, and maybe we adjust it up, maybe we adjust it down. But, um, yeah, having the joint communications, that's always need and just agree to a fund it for multiple years is something that we really need. But at least on the solid waste side, we can consistently, we don't have to keep adjusting things every year. Well, let's try this, but then, you know, the year after this year, we see, okay, well, we do need to charge more tipping fee. So we need to adjust this again, and mm -hmm. there's never any cycle. Yes, until we get it right, as it were. I don't think there's anything really we can do like in Gary's Hanky situation yet. I mean, I think we'd be, yeah, uh, Pat, we have uh, individuals that own uh, uh, multiple, I think you said four or five. Four or five residences. Um, I'm chase them. He's getting charged, the, he's bringing in from those residences, he's bringing in the amount that exceeds 1,000 pounds per month. Um, Chase is reading off on the, on the, uh, is it resolution? Mm -hmm. uh, the resolution? Tipping fee resolution that it specifically states um, corp has to be an incorporated entity to uh, take advantage of that. My, you know, just a question, right? Not the, what he's asking is, can he get a thousand pound, the, a thousand pound allowance for residents that he owns? And as the resolution is written, he's not an incorporated business. He's just an individual resident that owns multiple residences that rents it out. Yeah. So he wouldn't qualify because yeah. we limit it to. Where, where is that? In the I didn't realize that either. I thought that was 
that's probably my only question. We're we're simply not in the tight. It's the towards the bottom of the page. Um, every. Oh, there's a private businesses on account. Because well, in this case, 
can't give me an address. You can give me any number of addresses, and I have no way of verifying it. Mm -hmm. So if you own sixty, you would almost have to have somebody that had multiple residences, like Gary, come in and apply for a permit for something where then he would have to list them, they would have to be checked out, and then he would have a special... But he can't see them without the pen. That's, yeah. that's the thing. I think it that would have to be, but then you would have to write it in your next one that, okay, we're going to have this exemption or this, in order for you to do what he's wanting to do, have to apply for multiple residence permits. And that would really be in the gray area. Yes. Yes. Because right now we have, from February, we tracked 124 individual accounts. People that bring it in, ask your name. For the 30 day period, they brought in an average of 300 and, uh, 380 pounds. So nowhere close. Most people bring in 120, 130 pounds on a weekend and dump it. It's the individuals that are bringing in four or 500 pounds every Saturday that because they've exceeded that thousand pound limit, they go on our account. So every time they show up and we ask them their name, they have an account number, we just ring them up in the system. And those particular ones that are bringing in like that in that situation, what are they? And it does, it's just trash. Trash originated from their residence or? They just say it's trash. I mean, and because they don't, we're under the current interpretation, regardless of where it's coming from, it's being attributed to that account holder. So. Do you see the dilemma, I mean, we're dealing with, though? I mean, mm -hmm. originating from a residence, I mean, you know, he just, as Pat just stated, you know, if, if the one entity that, that the rule was designed for is really not even a corporation, I mean, well, the LLC dissolves and have you change in the right. So, yeah, we, but we can change the wording. But the intent was that any it, it has to be a specific business, a residentially oriented business, rental housing business. Which he is. He who? Gary Hankey. Yeah, because he has to show it on the tax probably with it. Right. So, you have to have what the. Talking with him, did he even indicate that he had a business number or a Well, I asked him, is this is part of a business? And no, it's just his property that he paid taxes on. But if he's a sole proprietor, he's going to have an EIN, one of the. He'll have a social security one EIN. Yeah. If he's not set up with any other any structure outside of mm -hmm. sole proprietorship. Is that right, Pat? Yeah, that's true. Hmm. So. Did the wording, I mean, incorporated, just do away with that and just say a business entity, regardless of how it's structured, but it has to be an official business. Because, the, I mean, if we're going to have to go through an issue permit, individual permits, so sure, sure. this person owns 15 properties, they get 15,000 pounds every 30 day billing cycle. I think we should have that wording clarified because Pat said something about wording of like private business or I don't know what you use the terminology. Well, this wasn't what I had. This wasn't the language that I had down on the, the draft that I had. Mine said private businesses on account shall be charged on an aggregate basis as determined at the discretion of the Solid Waste Department Manager. And I'm sure that that generated discussion that didn't want to leave discretion somewhere. Okay. But mm -hmm. I. That sounds like the wording from 2014. Or one of the drafts that we submitted to the Solid Waste Committee for this year. But. Oh, um, it was. Mm -hmm. Which I think we've uh, kind of taken care of that by if you just have an account with us, mm -hmm. you get the same rules essentially. Everyone, whether it's Martin's Tractor, still gets 1,000 pounds every building cycle. Just the same. Any individual residents bringing in there, two bags of trash. It's the exact same rule. We apply it the same. So that part, I 
so far it's clear it's just the instances where you have an individual that owns yeah. multiple and because, of, mm-hmm. and because of that they if they own multiple businesses we already discussed in this it's if we yeah. right because then each individual business would either use uh, Martin's or Deppenbaugh or some private holder to hold their trash and they would do it individually and it would be attributed to them individually so that would take care of the problem that's just when you start getting into okay the solid waste department needs to issue a permit for uh, an individual resident that owns multiple residences sure. so they have to fill out and some people I mean if you own 10 properties you get five tons every month for free that's paid for by sales tax we, we wouldn't charge a tipping fee well at some point we do need to collect on some tipping fee because that's going to end up being a lot of time at the end of the year. Oh, I agree, especially anything that's especially on the and you're collecting on the commercial side, mm-hmm. anything non-residential, especially. And I don't know, I brought this up as well, but the amount in question was $8.40. I don't know if that has any bearing, whether, you know... Is that a total of months? Will that be that was, that months was overrun? Month. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That was last month's bill. So, I, does that, you know, set a, I don't know if that's like a, a precedent or a new indicator for... Uh, is that some... No, but, I mean... Do you want to go to war with the public over it lost to forty cents too? I'm not saying that that's not wasn't applied correctly, I'm just saying do we go to war over you know, the, Are we talking like a, are we talking about a, 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 a lot of different I mean wh- how many instances is this gonna to apply to or that are coming through? Well if I if the interpretation applies to this individual residence with that interpretation then I have to apply it to everyone else because unless that's this person warrants a specific circumstance, whatever that would be, I would I don't know if I would actually have to go out and if we were to set up a permit system, advertise it or make it public knowledge that this is a new That's the reason I was saying if we yeah. let this run for a year so we could see is this a heavy month for him that he got that charge? Mm-hmm. Will he be getting charges every month? Maybe maybe his weights will be down a little bit. Maybe it'll also encourage him maybe to recycle or something and, sure. and watch his weight and get underneath that. You know, if we just, you know, I don't know if we can just I- immediately change it, try, you know, what I'm saying is if we could let this run out for a year and then say, hey, we do have a problem, we're going to change it for next year. That's mm-hmm. where I'm coming from. I, I know what you're saying. Yeah. But until it runs its course a little bit. I don't know if we know exactly where this is going. Well, and that's exactly what it, that's why I don't know. You can change the system for one complaint versus if we have throughout the course of the year 10. Is, is it becoming like, do we have a statistically significant problem? Well, in my mind, it's, he has a fee generated because he brought in more than what he's allotted. Regardless of whether it originated from four or one, mm-hmm. he's still over. So I, I don't think that that is exempt. No. Well, yeah, because yeah. he brought in an aggregate amount. Yeah. The amount. rules set. I mean, right. Mm-hmm. I would say explain to him going forward. You know, this is you know any tonnage, any, any volume that you're bringing in over that thousand pounds is subject to any type of tipping fee. Mm-hmm. I mean, I would be pretty explicitly clear with him. And in the issue of business entity. I don't try and explain that is because one thing that was mentioned consistently throughout this sh- very short discussion is that he's a property taxpayer. I mean, he believes he's already paid into the system, and that he shouldn't be having to pay a tipping fee whatsoever. Um, different discussion, but when I asked him, is he a business? Is this rental? You know, is, is he renting houses as part of a business? His answer was no, but trying to make that explicitly clear, he is technically paying that 
I should be making the profit too. So I mean, it's it's not you know he's he's charging rent, he's getting paid, he should be making profit. So you know it's not like somebody's just going out and bringing garbage home with garbage from the elderly and be like a nonprofit where he's just trying to help people. Mm -hmm. This is something that he is generating himself. I mean, he is generating profit. Should be. So. I, yeah. I think we can almost, maybe, like I say, if we let this run, we'll see that there's, he might not be the only case we've got. Maybe this will happen a lot, but mm -hmm. to make an exemption for one person at this time, I think it's kind of... It's, it's a little, yeah, it's a little quick, because that, it does have major implications for the department as well, trying to rework that, which, if, it's, if that's what it has to be, then we'll just develop, devise another system to keep track of it, but yeah, for re, re, redoing everything for one instance that involved $8.40, I was just trying to do my best to explain, mm -hmm. and if there's still an issue, then definitely have to come up for mm -hmm. the state's case or tell them for the commission. Yeah, uh, as far as the, the verbiage, yeah, still, I don't, I don't agree with probably the verbiage on the, on the test made corporate, I don't, that, that's the only thing that probably still hangs up in my head as far as, so, you could have multiple different entities that right. are actual business owners. Yeah, I agree. So, you can just change it to business entity if that's our understanding? Yeah. You're probably going to be yeah, so far. So I'd say like at this point, interpreted as so if you're not a corporation, but I mean like an actual business that so you know sole proprietorship LLC, all these fall under that business entity. Correct partnerships. That, but it also has to be at that point a rental housing business as well. It can't be any other type of full defined rental. We have to own multiple single houses, I mean, that's still I mean, rental business. Essentially, the, we had a tortured task of trying to come up with a specific phrase because we had a business owner that was pushing for that exemption, that arguing that that specific type of business, however it's, however it's created, get that for residence exemption, so that's what we're trying to keep. That's, if you extend it to all businesses, then forget it, because Martin can submit me every residence that they... But they're commercial. So, exactly, so... They're, they're commercial. In this. So we're keeping it to a residential crop business. Well, Martin would be hauling, that's their commercial business, they're hauling as a business. Mm -hmm. But so keeping the, the rental housing, because if you're a residential contractor, it could possibly fall under that, because they primarily work on residences. It's the, we're trying to keep it uh, specific. I think we're getting kind of lost. I think we're getting a little deep, I mean. Well, we're talking about specific entities that own multiple single own and and houses. Own and maintain Atchison County residences. That's what we have, so I'm just trying to... Well, I think, I kind of like a past approach. It sounds like it's really broad, but it's, you know, it's pretty to the point, too, I mean, in a way. I mean, private business that has residences. Well, he, he makes a valid point, too. I know, and I'm not saying he's wrong, either. Well, I'm just, you know, just how do we... all in from a hundred different residents. You know, uh, yeah. Yeah. I guess you, you have to draw a line somewhere, but I don't I think agree. the intention was when we drove through this line to say corporations count that LLC is done. So that's what I got worried about. That's right. that's the line that I don't think that we can no, draw. That, I think that would be so. Just if we were to scratch that and just say a business entity. Is that specific enough, or is that still too broad? Well, regardless of how you are a body corporate, or however you, I don't know how you would describe.
describe it? How are you structured? You're a business, a rental business. You know, I think, uh, honestly, we don't have enough info because you see, you know who goes out there, you know what the accounts are and who's bringing what. So we don't. Mm -hmm. We see where that line line should be. Um, and maybe we ought to, can, can you give us a spreadsheet of, of those? Of? The, the accounts that were in the past, the summary of them over the last, I don't know, year or six years? Yeah, I, well, I, we would definitely, in the last year, have the, the accounts that have had a charge, and then I can also, I have with me the spreadsheets where we're keeping track of individuals on the, the you know, the name basis. So yeah, I can provide the names and the addresses and um, amounts, but um, yeah, it's, it's, we can just repeal the sales tax and just go straight to a ticket fee. The easiest way to manage is all the way from one. It, it, it obscures everything because everybody pays sales tax, presumably. Well, I don't disagree with this. It's very cloudy on what. It makes things definitely more of a challenge. I will say that. Okay, so we'll just work under that interpretation of incorporating rental housing businesses. Uh, this just and then if this individual wants I'll just if he has more questions or wants to appeal it to the commission, I'll just have him come up next Tuesday. Yeah, why don't why don't you give him a call and explain to him you know you know, how how and why he's being charged, you know, for um prisons of L. I I think probably explaining to him one more time would probably help him. That's my hope. But I just want to make sure because we have so many different applications or interpretations because no two cases are alike or should be alike, but maybe a new old argument can mean I charge or yeah. Okay, I will go ahead and do that. And if we have any more issues I'll just email and give everybody a heads up that that was the result of the conversation. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Okay. You for us. Oh. Not plus they left. They oh okay. was that was that yeah, was it that that tractor got scratched up on the cab You know, we got that letter from First law Okay. That came back in the mail. Yeah, that's what Pauline. You know the right address. I can find it for you. I don't think it's not listed anymore. It's not listed. Yeah. Is that KCAM from OCAM? Okay. Is he still? Okay. It should be. I don't know. Maybe I'm thinking of Tom Jones. Oh, yeah. He was, he was a KCAM.
Yeah. Like we had a couple of departments were asking about. They've been they're starting to go through stuff and destroy records. Um, and we were who do we usually who do we do we destroy ourselves or do we get like I I've got a sign thing with achievement services okay. to shred all the my stuff. They shred it. Okay. There's no way we do have a small shredder, but there's no way that. Well, I mean, I got boxes and boxes. Somebody said something about Pro Shred, and I the, somebody said Pro Shred they thought was cheaper than yeah. Achievement Services. Do you think that's true, or? Um, I just figured Didn't that come up last week or two weeks ago? Somebody I, I, said I think you said that. I think yeah. I heard you say that. Somebody, somebody had yeah, one or two. There was somebody that was I up know. here talking about it. Was yeah. That HR? No. Uh, I don't know. Uh, the Sheriff's Department, I know, has Pro Shred, but it was a last, wasn't it? I give it seemed like it was. And I'm just getting trying to get sure, sure. Oh yeah, I don't have a problem doing that. Somebody, right, right. somebody said like they come up on side, they like you just like basically take out their truck and they shred it right there. Well, the service services have to take it all up too. Oh, okay. I don't. Sure. You don't have to take it. That's they right. pick it up. So who's been shredding all the stuff down? Yeah, now somebody did bring that up about all of the bags of shredded paper. Um, Mr. Scott. Billings is that he'll have to like come around every day, every week to okay. see if there's any. But it's usually the court, either that or um, treasurer's office or appraiser's office. Or coming down and using that shredder that's. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was brought up too. He said last week that he was. He, he has something that goes over to wearing house or over here to the business and uh -huh. maybe just have them stop over and see if there's any bags. That's fine if it's destroyed I mean, mm -hmm. securely. I don't have a problem with that. Yeah, I mean, I... I don't know who said this. Who said that? Oh, let me, get, let me get one that says in here. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't think we have a problem with destroying okay. our stuff. I don't think we have any issues. And um, I have three file cabinets down in the mix of health department, and I just called Connie and asked her. She just, they wanted them because I'm not moving them. I don't have any reason for them. Okay. So I'm just going to leave them there. Unless you move any. Is there a bunch of stuff there? Somebody asked about district courts. Somebody asked about yeah, district, district courts. District court, there's there's a crazy or something. I would try to clean mine up. Yeah. I'm going to say, I don't think it'd be any problem with that because as people are going away from, you know, doing more digital stuff, we're going to have a lot of filing cabinets that are, <laughs> we're, we're not going to need more well, filing cabinets. Well, if she was going to leave them in and she had files, she could put sure. them in there. Yeah, it's staying kind of in the family, just be going to do that. Kind of really still in. Yeah, yeah, so I'd, I'd say I that. I mean, I, I still have some more stuff down there. I have some old, and I can't destroy those real estate records. So, cards that we used to have that have mm -hmm. all of them. I can't destroy them. So. Well, what is the schedule? What's the historical, historical society schedule say? On those? I don't, have, I don't have that part with me, but real estate. I mean, I do have them um, and a microphone. Well, I, I don't know. I don't know what they are, and I'd, I'd have to look at the schedule. No real estate um, ownership records. Back in 1953, You said they are microfilms, or? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think they're all microfilms. They're just down in the middle. They're on shelving. Mm -hmm. Was it microfilm? Was microfilm one of the. Microfilm is a true. I mean, yeah. Yeah. I guess you could probably call. I know there's somebody on staff at the campus I'll historical. I'll, I'll but you can like ask questions very specific and they can give you. Cause they I'll, even I'll look up under the retention thing. Okay. Did you have another one? Oh, yeah. I'm going to turn Yeah, then then we can. Uh, what's the. Is it, a, is it by resolution or is it order? It's an order. Okay. So, um, she said for out a copy, I would entertain a motion to um, uh, accept, uh, do you say work order? 
that. All in favor, signify saying aye. Aye. It's very 2-0, and then she'll get us a copy and we'll sign off. And, uh, okay. Then Pat just handed me a document on the uh, yeah, okay. That's just the draft of, uh, I mean, I think it's final draft.
forth and gave them. Okay. So, so what we do is we have the uh, senior classes from all three high schools generally send the class or mm -hmm. send the students. And uh, introduction, kind of like what everybody does, and then we have usually a presentation from Kansas Association of Counties. Usually it's, um, it's been more about the last couple of years or uh, very well. They kind of give an update, like a history of how counties and Kate County, especially the mm -hmm. what services we do. So. Okay. Yeah, I'm glad you pointed that out because I really wanted to know. <laughs> yeah, so we'll start to know. Well, I, I did read it, but then I didn't have it down on my agenda. Yes, yes, and I am the large question. And then we'll do the last an hour, and then we'll break up, and each, all those kids will, everybody's like assigned to like each department or, or like officially we'll go with them. And, and follow them, and then we'll come back and uh, have a regular session. Okay, so I don't know. We, we have a whole lot of the agenda for next week. Uh, no, I have 130 county lights that we need. They're coming in next Tuesday. What if we had just, I don't know if your schedule is, we just have to come up and do, because we're going to have a regular, are we, are we scheduled to have like a regular meeting? Yes, we talked about that. What's your what's your agenda about next week? We're just wondering since the um, county government day classes are here, we had to just mm -hmm. have regular work set or have a have a regular session, have a regular commission session in the morning. Yeah, just I mean we'll just start and then if we we can break at noon, we can come back if we have unfinished business or something we'll take care of. Do they have any? Yeah, I just don't I need to confirm with them to make sure. I heard they, they I said something to them, and they said that they would, they could probably send somebody, but I haven't heard anything back from. Yeah, yeah, some years it's worked pretty cool. Other years it was so sudden. Yeah, so I did see the one. Excuse me. Downstairs, I think. Yeah, I think that's fine. Yeah, 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 that's Yeah, why should you do that? Tuesday morning sometime? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Is that the only one on the agenda for next week? Well, Joe said he's going to be talking to you Tuesday. <coughs> so you want me to? I can let Joe. I, I'll email Joe. Yeah. Have Joe get Joe scheduled. No, Joe Bowen in the Kansas City today, so he was not able. I could call him earlier.
trim some stuff off of the platform that we talked about last time, okay. which was like a hundred, it was like a hundred eighty-four thousand yeah. dollar safety configuration, uh, crash configuration annual. So we were able to trim some fat off of that and features, and then we pressed the sales guys, and they, you know, they were able to work with us a little bit more. Um, so we'll go over both of those right now. Um, the good, really excellent news is these are quotes from the heart monitor from the heart monitor company. And so what they're willing to do is they have, um, you know, we were at the previous quote at like uh, 60, Sixty-one, just over sixty-one thousand for two heart monitors. So um, what we were able to work with them since we bought, we previously bought a whole bunch of monitors and stuff. And they, what they did was they gave us seven thousand each for trading on the old LP12s. And after doing the research for the last several, for the last this past year when we did all the heart monitor research, I can tell you, you will not get better than that. That's seven thousand for each monitor. So that takes fourteen thousand off of the price for buying two heart monitors. Now, the reason we especially wanted to get over here soon was that is only going to be they'll only honor that until um, the end of March. So, so we probably at some quick point need to make a decision on that. After that point, they will only give like three to three thousand to thirty five hundred. So I mean, it more than half off after that. Part of the reason is it's the end of their it's the end of this old fiscal year. Okay. Part of that is that they're still we're still kind of riding on all the monitors we previously purchased, and that kind of comes to an end at the end of March too. So um, I would encourage you if you're going to do something with heart monitors to do it under that, which would mean before the end of, of March. But with that being said, once you take the the fourteen thousand off for the trading for the two. That brings it down to forty-seven thousand, just a little bit over forty-seven thousand. Okay. Um, you got that last uh, page four. Yeah, that's page uh, four, or five. four or five. Yeah. Um, and so that would be trading two of the existing LiPac twelve, sending in two, getting two of these new old monitors with everything that it needs. Um, the configuration is the same, and we've already done a little legwork on that. We we know exactly what we need there, and that's all in the quote. It's all it's all included in the quote. Okay. Switching over to the trucks, uh, since this is we're kind of dealing with the um, on the, the the budget of the 2.3. The so Jay went back and um, adjusted some stuff, um, took out a few features. No, did not take out any safety considerations or anything like that. Um, and also just got more serious with the with the sales rep. And um, we were able, he was able to get that total cost down. And this is for the safety configuration annuals. It's an E450 chassis, just like we talked about the Ford chassis, like the other ones are, um, for 175 And let me give you that. Letters of ten on those. The the negative is they already have the four the, the four thousand four five hundred dollar Ford fleet discount figured in because they figured you guys had that so they already had that figured in so it couldn't take that off the top but it, you know at least it was already in there included. What this the only thing this does not include on the annual side of things is what trading value you're going to get for Meg Four which once again don't hold your breath it's not going to be a whole lot and you can and we can figure out maybe the best way to get rid of that truck or sell it or trade it or whatever but that's not included in here so what would you suggest is something like that would you I mean are there people in the market who purchase older businesses like that for a reason or another or um you know if you if you could trade it in and get a few thousand out of it I would do it um. You could, you could, through some time and effort and work, maybe find somebody 
that would be interested in using it as a utility van. That's what I was thinking. For, like, for a few, for a couple thousand more, maybe, or something like that. But <coughs> it's going to take some legwork to get that done, probably. I mean, unless you have a good, I mean, what do you do with other worn out county equipment? I mean, do you have a good. Typically, we dispose property. Like, <laughs> Purple Wave seems to be a, a popular venue that we use in a lot of. Yeah. They charge no um, fee to, to municipal or, or county governments. So maybe that maybe. service. But I think first, the recommendation would probably be let's see what they would do on a trade in, and then at least we know what we, you know. Yeah, that's our baseline. We know what we're that's our baseline. Yeah. <coughs> so um, now on the, the monitors are good to go. Okay. On the ambulance, there are a few things we want to tweak, but it's not gonna it's not gonna make a huge difference in the price of it. I mean, it's just you know little little things that we want to finalize. We want to go back through and comb the the spec sheet on it and do those things before it's actually ordered. If that's what you guys want to do, um, but in general, they have agreed to this price for the truck that we got you know lined out. Um, and so you know we we're shooting for that two two twenty three and. With the 47 on the heart monitors and the <coughs> excuse me, 175 and change on the annual, I think we have 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 done that. Yeah, at least it was, it was pretty high. But could you verify that balance on? I'm trying to think which. Oh, yeah, I can't do one. Well, you can get in. Okay. I'll call. I'll it should be an issue. I just want to make sure that, that that's it. Yeah. Okay. But no, I think the. I think that that heart monitor, that's, that's really come down quite a bit. It's pretty, yeah, you're not gonna find pretty solid. Trade. Yeah. I've actually had some pride. I know. Yeah. That's the advantage of, like you said, that bulk purchase yeah. that part of option that, that you have with us. Is, or we've already yeah. got to another price. Yeah. Yeah, it's hard to pass up on. Yeah, I would No, <laughs> no, no. <laughs> <that's what laughs> we My record. We're just right, you know, if you hope you. Yeah, you know, we were trying to be bears. We we're just trying to sure. operate it within what we what we did budget. Well, yeah. We know we need to we know we need to update that stuff and it's critical equipment. So. And plus, you're looking at getting rid of. I mean, you're looking at getting rid of the two worst heart monitors, which are yeah, the cheap. I mean, they're I mean they're over their useful lifespan. I think they're eight or nine years old. So. I'm oh, sorry, I cut you off. Did no, you're fine. fine. Okay. No. Um, that's where we're at here. How much of that stuff did we take off of us before we do the vehicles? We take the radios out, I'm sure. Yeah. We take the lights out. Um, lights usually, um, lights usually stay unless you want them. Um, but you would take everything not attached, including the radios that are installed. Um, anything else, anything. Uh, fire extinguishers, oxygen tanks, I mean. Are there any small ambulance services that you can benefit from? That from the ambulance? Yeah. <coughs> um, you know, that's a hard question, maybe. You know, maybe somebody would buy it, but I know a lot of you know, they have set budgets. I know a, a, a little service north north of us, um, you know, they just bought a but that's what it says they just the you know, they were on fifty fold a year and they just bought a probably a hundred and ninety thousand dollar well, probably close to two hundred thousand dollar truck. <coughs> Don't ask me why, but I don't want to do one. Um is that pretty good? Like, I mean, obviously, I know my sleep every day. I mean, in your opinion, is that pretty good? I mean, is that about on the new bit? Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, yeah. In, in your overall opinion, as far as the <coughs> the quality and type of the ambulance and overall bid, is that about what you normally see? I mean, mm -hmm. <coughs> excuse me. That is what we've been buying. That's what we have bought. And actually, last week, but. <coughs> Excuse me. Last week we were going to bring one of the units over. Oh, and have you guys looked through it? But. Sure. No, I just needed to check. Can you imagine what a diesel, like some of those bigger yeah. ones that I see on the road? Can you imagine what those ones are about? 14. Well, the fact that they're pushing yeah, 100 or. Yeah, they talk about over 200. I think it's so good. Did you like what I was talking about? I don't know. You're showing up. Alright, I just thought maybe 
Thank you. Clear. Do you know what he had taken off of the ambulance? What it was that they removed? I think air horns was an option that we took off. It was on the pricier side. Privacy windows, I believe. The ducted AC. The ducted AC. So instead of the AC running, in the back of the ambulance you have a panel and the AC usually blows out there. Sometimes for an added cost they can duct that so it goes out over the top of the, on the ceiling of the ambulance and then it kind of comes down over everybody. We cut that out. That was somewhat of a pricey option. So just a few things that were made nicer but what weren't an absolute must. Sure, I just was curious what they took out. So, yeah. And actually to bring the price down even more we told them, which we're not 100% sure if we're going to be buying one later this year. We might be. But we told them that there is a possibility that this exact ambulance we might be purchasing a second one for us. And if that's the case, I mean that may help bring it down a little bit too. So, Well, I mean, I think that 
getting the price down, I mean, that's, yeah, that looks good. But, you know, at the same time, since I'm kind of trying to speak for him a little bit, since that's yeah. a concern that he sure. has. Well, do you guys want to say, do you want to, I mean, my only thing is be available for a phone call. Well, I mean, or even, do, if you want, I mean, if you, I mean, I hate bottom when he's sick, but yeah. that might be an option, or you guys can be next, you meet next week. Yeah, yeah next Tuesday. If you, guys, if, if you guys want to discuss this, we'll just leave all this information with you, and if you can let me know, then okay. we're still good. I, that, would, that would be mm -hmm. ideal, just because, like you said, I don't know how, he didn't sound very good today, I hate to bother him, but... I, and I would like to yeah. include him at all the possible. I mean, yeah, he's purchase and everything there, and... and yeah, we'll understood, out. sure. So we'll table that until next week, and then, I mean, because next week is... What is it? The 24th. The 24th. So, um, so we, should we should be good there. I'll, I'll double check with them. I mean, they said it's the end of March, so they should honor that. So. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I think mm -hmm. we'd be probably willing to make a, mm -hmm. a decision then, so they'd still give us a week in March to. I mean, you said at the end of March, so. Correct. We yeah, I don't think that's so. Hate to push it too close, but I think we should sure. probably be making a decision today if he was here. Sure, correct. Sure. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's, that's perfectly fine. And then um, if, if some you know one of you guys can just let me know, um, and then I'll get I'll get the cell truck going ASAP if you guys make a decision next week or whatever. Okay, we've got the documents here. Mm -hmm. so we can yeah, that's not a problem. At all. Yeah, yeah. Now, do you need me back for that or? Um, you can uh, if, if Bill has any more questions or something like that. We're going to be probably meeting here. Um, mm -hmm. uh, next week we have ten government next. We have um, kids from. Uh, the, the three high schools, three or high schools here. We meet, we start at 9 a.m. and then we, um, the kids all disperse between different departments at that time. And so we're probably in the morning. Okay. I think Pauline was just looking at, we had one on the agenda possibly, well, probably two at least. We might I still be meeting in the afternoon. To if, if we need to, yeah, if we, if we need to. Well, I mean, I, I suggest we have like a real session starting that morning with this. I mean, if mm -hmm. the kids are here, Probably more interesting having a real session instead of just work. But right. mm -hmm. if we need to take other actions or carry it in the afternoon, we can. We can break it, break for lunch and then come back at a set time. Right now, I have some meetings on that day. Okay. So I won't be able to be here unless I move some stuff around. Okay. Is that okay? That's fine with us. I mean, I think it's pretty. We've, we've got your sheets here. Yeah. I mean, you got all the information. You got the yeah. clothes. Four of us here that that heard you. So. All right. And plus. <coughs> the monitors we brought up before, I don't know, I don't, did you get this? I it was two weeks ago when we you talked got about the monitors. the monitors. Yeah, and those are currently, we've got, um, we've got two over here right now so that the crews can train on them and do that type of stuff. Okay. Uh, so let's get that, let's get that on the agenda for sure next week. Well, our monitors and the heaters for sure. Mm -hmm. So we'll have a discussion on it. And we've got your contact, <laughs> their contact information or have it. Yeah, I think, I think most of that we, we have email or sure, sure. Well, I was just wondering about during the meeting if we had a question. Yeah, do you prefer? Yeah, well, yeah. I don't know if you're that's what I was getting to. I know we can definitely get a hold of you, but I mean, during the meeting, if Commissioner Cole would have something that.
we have the we're gonna bring the animals over and kind of show you the layout. And actually, that's something we still can do. Maybe here in a couple of weeks or something, bring <coughs> bring the animals over and walk you through it and kind of show you um, some features of it in the back that are that are workable on, on the safety crash configuration and things. Yeah, yeah that'd be that's a good idea. Okay. Um, other than that, I don't think there was anything else other than just finishing up some paperwork. Contractually. Yeah, via, via email. I think that's all. Okay. It, it's, I should have it to you today or tomorrow. <laughs> okay. So, nothing new there. So. Okay. Yeah, okay. great. Anything else? Anything they could. You know, can either. Yeah. Good job on the, I think the arm motors. That's really. You know, oh, yeah. That's pretty yeah. impressive. That's pretty impressive on what they what they do with that. Well, constantly they just ran a semi. Yeah, Sunday evening. Sunday evening. Contact, so they're already getting uh, an important feature. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah, pretty good. So, I mean, for the name of I mean, <laughs> what can you do? It's a specialized vehicle, you know, I think. Yeah. All these companies know how to. You know, price it accordingly, unfortunately, but I mean, I mean, when we pay for one, that's well, that's about what you.
I was still on there when they were going to take possession of it. I was still on the fire. Yes. Board. And since then I've gotten off. So, but I, that's the reason I know it was about two years ago is when this was coming about. And that's just one reason I thought, well, possibly if it would be a better than what they've got, you know, we could trade up for something with them if they could utilize it. I'm not saying give it to them, but mm -hmm. I could talk to Kirk about Kirk Butler and see it. Yeah, I think, yeah. If they wanted them, it's, it's well used. <laughs> yeah. I, don't I, don't I think the one we gave was probably better shape than <laughs> older than. I still may just say something to sure, them. Sure, sure. In case there's. And we can work something out. Yeah. Yeah, so let us know what. I think at least gives that yeah. idea. Okay. You know, based on what we have to accept it. It gives us an idea of the sport. Mm hmm. Okay. All right. Sounds good. Okay. All right. Appreciate you coming up. No problem. Thanks, guys. And yes, yeah. we'll be over the next case week. Yep.